Hey all, Pierceo86 here. We're back for more Final Fantasy XI. We're going to be tackling some more Rise of the Zillart expansion content today. Um, as you know from the last episode, we went through the Temple of Ugalepi in search of the old Hermit Lady that uh, Gilgamesh saw when he'd last been doing an expedition through there. We fought through a lot of Tonberries and, well, more Tonberries. Finally, a Tonberry boss battle and uh, learned a bit more about the Zillart and some of the history and just some of the uh, very earth-shattering stuff that they were looking to do with opening the way to the gods and all that stuff. Anyways, uh, the next mission here is called Headstone Pilgrimage. In this mission, we have to go around different parts of the world and we have to look for what are called Fragments of Light. We've already been given the Dark Fragment. And myself and my alternate character, Rage Cat, will be doing this story mission together in order to find these fragments and move forward. Uh, I've got some other filler content, uh, side content planned as well too, so stay tuned for that. And I'm getting to a point now where there's there's a lot of content and it's it's hard to pick what to do next and in what order. But hey, I mean we're gonna tackle we're gonna tackle it all at some point anyway. So the first place that we have to go to for the water fragment is the Ordella's Caves. It says we have to travel there through the canyon at F7. I think they're referring to the entrance that we've used before. I just gotta remember which zone, which region this is. There we go. I'll double check that when we get here. Rage Cat, unfortunately, does not have the book warp to that, so she's gonna have to go there the old fashioned way. Here we are at the Ordella's Caves. We're going to be looking for the water fragment for the Zillard quest here. So, Rage Cat didn't have the survival guide here, so now she has it, so she'll be able to book port here in the future. So, first off, we're, I confirmed that we're at the right entrance. So now we have to head east, then south to I-6. And that'll take us over to the second map. I think, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, I think we had to take this route for Mr. Pierso's AF sword a while back. It's amazing how much I forget, despite the fact that I uh, spend so much time editing these videos and, and uh, putting them up. You'd think I'd remember it all, but I don't. Now, from looking at the wiki, some of these light fragments will involve some fights. This one I don't believe is one of them. There's a couple that uh, don't involve any kind of fighting. It's basically just literally go snatch and grab. The item we're looking for is called a Sermet Headstone. So I'm pretty sure I've seen one or two of those throughout our travels or playing off camera or whatever. So. Yeah, we'll just have to keep an eye out for those, and once we get to those, we can take the fragment right out. And there's seven in total that we need to find. So we'll definitely be doing quite a bit of running around. Okay, so we're on map two. The guide, I'm not sure if this is a typo or not, but it says on map one, enter the tunnel leading to the south at H9. I do see a tunnel leading down at H9 on this map. Although we are on map two, so we're going to shoot for that area down there. Every time we come into this cave, it is pretty in here. I like this place, as far as dungeons go. And as I've said before, Final Fantasy IV is uh, my favorite Final Fantasy out of all of them, so I always love a chance to soak up some of that Final Fantasy IV music. Once the video's obviously prepared and edited and rendered and all that. I'm also checking on Rage Cat frequently too. Want to make sure she doesn't get stuck on anything. If y'all remember from a much earlier episode, our first time ever coming here, I had my entire trust team get stuck when we were here trying to unlock Paladin. So definitely don't want that to happen. 
Okay, so now we're following the path leading upwards and continue southeast to the southeastern little room at H11 slash H12. And we will be dropping down a hole. There will be mobs at the bottom of the hole, but according to the guide, the mobs are not aggressive, so we don't need to worry about putting up any kind of stealth. That might change the further we get in, though. And there are some mobs that do get up to the level 80, 90 range. I know when we were doing our fight in here for the AF sword for Paladin, for Mr. Pierso, there were bunnies that were... Yeah, these ones here. The level 86 incredibly tough bunnies. Because we did that fight. Yeah, it was right here that we did that fight. And Swagger Spruce. Thankfully, these are not aggressive. Okay, so we'll head down to the tunnel that's more on the southeast end. So this is definitely the first time we've come this deep into Ordella's Caves. So it'll be kind of neat to see the see the deeper recesses of these caves. Okay. Tarj Beetle. So these guys are in the 80s as well, but not aggressive. Oh, wow. This uh, cave definitely got creepier. <laughs> just look into the dark there. Like, looking into the distance there, and it's just this dark abyss. That's eerie. Definitely some Fear of the Unknown vibes there, at least for me. Okay, so now we have to go east to I-11. Yet another tunnel leading upwards to the map three. Mobs here are aggressive. So we're definitely going to have to stealth up when we get up there. Should have enough sneak oils and prism powders. Probably going to have to stock up again here pretty quick. Especially if I'm doing it for both Rage Cat and Mr. Pierce. So, come to think of it, hindsight's 2020. I probably should have subbed White Mage, and then I could have just cast it, sneaking invisible. Okay, so we're back to Seeker Bats. I guess we'll see what level the mobs are when we get up here. I mean, if we're dropping down to the 20s here, might not have to worry too much. Sure, Rage Cat navigates safely up the stairs here. Okay, more bats. Oh, looks like another exit to Lathane Plateau that way. I think that's the way we have to go anyway, because I think the Sermit Headstone we have to find is actually in Lathane Plateau. It's just in an area that we can only access via the Ordella's Caves. I'm just curious to see what the mobs are going to be like up here. Okay, these guys are level 30. They are... Okay, so the, these are not going to be a concern for us. Yeah, we're... Oh yeah, we're good. I was thinking there were going to be more level 80-ish mobs, but it doesn't seem to be the case. But if we see anything we don't recognize, we will definitely check them out before we proceed further. Good thing we're not doing this at level 30. Slash Pine. Yeah, level 27 as well. Well, that's a relief. Okay, so we're coming down towards H9 now. And... Ancient Bat is also level 26 as well. Beauty. So far, this seems like it'll be an easy fragment. Don't know about the other ones, though. One thing that's exciting about the other fragments, as I mentioned before, everything from here on out is new to me. There will be a lot of other Zillart expansion areas for us to go check out that I myself have never been to. So I'm excited for that, just to see some new areas. Okay, that guy is a notorious monster. This napalm is in the 30s. 
Hmm. Well, Windower is not telling me what level this guy is, but considering we're level 70 and these enemies are in the 30s, he's not even aggroing us. Let's go ahead and have some fun. Get Rage Cat in the punchy punch position. I should also put some buffs on Rage Cat too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely overleveled for this fight. Those guys in the back aren't even aggroing my magic, so... Yeah, we're all right. <sighs> well, he really don't like you, Rage Cat. I tried to get hate off you. Oh well. And no drop of any sort. Oh well. In fact, before we go, I'm not sure even what that guy drops. I can always look it up later, but I'm gonna mark him down in case we ever have to come hunt him again. Okay, so we're back in Lathane Plateau, but we're in an area that is pretty well inaccessible. You know, come to think of it, years and years ago, I think just when I was out just exploring, not doing any kind of mission, not even aware of what this area represents for story. I think I might have come here. This seems vaguely familiar. Of course, I wasn't doing any Zillart content, but I do have a vague memory of coming here. Because I remember coming to a canyon that you couldn't access from above. You had to go through Ardellus Caves. Unless there's another one of those in the Lathane Plateau that I'm unaware of at this point, but... Again, with this game's terrain, it's just the way they make things connect, the the secrets each area holds, it's it's amazing, the the world that they've created. Well, this looks promising. A water fragment, a single fragment of light. The way in which it shines suggests that it is resonating with something. Let us remove it. You will have to move closer. Okay, we got the water fragment. Now I just need to make sure that Rage Cat gets it. Doing all the story together from here on out. Couple goals. Well, there you have it, folks. That is our first fragment of seven. Six left to go. Let's move on to the next one. Moving on to our second fragment, which will be the ice fragment. We are back in the ruins of Fei Yin. We haven't been here since we did the 5-1 skeleton fight, which took place right before the battle with the Shadow Lord. Now, I've switched Mr. Pierso from Subjob Warrior to Subjob White Mage, just because we're probably going to need to do a little bit of sneaking around in here. We need to get to a place called the Cloister of Ice. I also went ahead and got a map of Feyin as well. So we need to get over to G9 and head down into the basement. Now, haven't... Oh, right, I forgot. You can't do doors when you're invisible. Now, I haven't really explored Feyin at all. Kind of just came here for the mission that we needed and never came back until now. So this is a place, I, as I've said before, I'm not very familiar with. So I'm excited to kind of see a little more of it. It's super helpful to have a map. Didn't realize how big this place actually was and how uh, it almost looks like the inside of like a, like a factory machine or, or something. Now I do still have sneak up and I think most of the stuff in here aggro's by sound. So I think we'll be alright, I hope. Yeah, this guy's 44 to 46, I don't think he would aggro us. 
Uh, aggro's by sound and low HP in any case. Now I do remember coming through here. And, oh wow, that's uh, kind of hard on the eyes. Not gonna lie. These aura golems, and just in case you're wondering, Rage Cat is following me. She's just invisible. These guys aggro by sight and magic, but he's showing up as too weak to be worthwhile. So no big concern there. And we are just about where we need to go. Now, I've never been to the Cloister of Ice, but from what I've read, it's involved in a few different quests. Uh, one very notable quest being the uh, Shiva quest when you do summoner and you have to go around and face off against summons in order to earn the right to summon them. So when we get around to trying summoner, not sure if we're going to do summoner on uh, Rage Cat or Mr. Pierso yet. I mean, we'll definitely unlock the job on both, but uh, at some point, but yeah, at some point we'll have to come back here and... Uh, Fight Shiva. So now that we're in the basement portion of Fei Yin, until reading this guide and getting a map, I wasn't even aware Fei Yin had a basement portion. We now have to go to the Cloister of Frost at I-5. And it the guide does say there are some evil weapons, and Sneak, of course, is required to get by them because they aggro by sound. And our Sneak should be good for another few minutes here, so as long as we don't waste any time here, we should be good. And thankfully, we appear to be away from the stupidly high-level mobs that I don't want to deal with. So we're going to need to go up to that wide-open area and... Oh, okay. Oh, alright, so we have to get up to where that crystal is there. It looks like there might be another home point crystal. Well, that's helpful. It's definitely helpful having a map. I actually went and bought a whole bunch of maps before I came here because I there's quite a few other areas we haven't been to yet that we'll be going to. So I figured grab maps for basically most of the most of the Zillard areas that we haven't gone to yet and just make sure that we're able to navigate because it is a lot harder to navigate looking on a screen and not being able to see exactly where you are. I also picked up maps for Ugalepi and the Den of Rancor too, just in case we ever have to go back there. I wouldn't mind going and doing some exploring there too and just kind of poking around because I never really got to see that place in the past. Okay, this guy is level 58. So we'll just go around back. Got some more creepy looking guys in here. More corrupted looking elven shadows. Definitely a little eerie. I'm glad they aggro by sound. And this is another fragment of light that shouldn't involve any kind of big epic fight or anything like that. It's just going to be a lot of stealth to get this one. And uh, then we'll move on to some of the other ones. Okay, so these guys are in the 60s, so these would definitely aggro us if we didn't have, didn't have sneak up. Definitely won't say no to another home point crystal. I'm gonna drop Rage Cat's invisible so she can grab that as well. Okay, so I've never been here before. We are in the Cloister of Frost. It doesn't appear that there's a map for this area. Okay, so I see the crystal. This is pretty cool. Okay, well that was easy. An ice fragment. Okay, got the ice fragment and we'll just get Rage to grab it. Always a good idea too when you're, again, this is my first time doing the mission. But not a bad idea, just because sometimes weird problems or glitches can happen. 
Check your temporary items to make sure that you've got all the fragments so far. We've got water, ice, and the dark one that we were given before. I was just checking on Rage Cat there. So as you can see on Mr. Pierce, so we've got the water fragment, we've got the ice fragment, and the dark fragment. All right, I was gonna use instant warp scrolls to get out of here, but uh, we're right close to a home point crystal, so I think we'll save those for the next one. I do wanna go ahead and click this quick just to see if anything happens. It is a giant crystal. Why, yes. Yes, it is.